When I was six years old, something happened that changed the direction of my life. It was a year that my father abandoned me and our family, and the year that my mom took on the responsibility of caregiver and sole breadwinner, taking on several jobs just to put food on the table. But despite these circumstances, I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned. I learned the value of hard work by running my double paper out seven days a week. And I learned about teamwork and how to cook for my sister as we worked together to prepare our meals. And I learned about perseverance by watching my mom day after day support our family. And although we didn't have a lot, I learned what I think is one of the most important lessons of all, that no matter your wealth, your age, your race, or your religion, that every person has the ability to give. So when I was 10 years old, I remember going to my first fundraiser at Straw Hat Pizza to help raise money for the Cerebral Palsy Foundation. And in junior high, I remember helping build wheelchair ramps for Habitat for Humanity. And in high school, I remember getting up early on Saturday mornings, driving an hour to downtown LA in my VW Bug to help make hundreds of sandwiches, loading the sandwiches into shopping carts and wheeling the carts down alley after alley to provide a meal and a caring touch for those in need. And although we didn't have a lot growing up, I was taught the importance of giving back to others as much as we received. So I shouldn't have been surprised that after starting and selling a few businesses and thinking I was gonna make my mark in the private sector, that I found myself dead center in the business of generosity for almost 20 years. And as a professional fundraiser and scholar on the evolution of giving, I believe right now is the most exciting, but also the most critical time in the history of philanthropy. The term philanthropy comes from the Greek, simply translates to the love of humankind. It embraces all people, cultures, and generations. And since the birth of Western civilization, philanthropy served as a catalyst and economic driver for societal change. And while every selfless act is intended to benefit others, it also binds you and I to a shared legacy of giving that helped champion women's suffrage, abolish slavery, and eradicate smallpox. And through partnerships in philanthropy today, type one diabetes will be cured in a few years, polio is about to be eradicated, and millions of people around the world are provided the basic necessities of food and water every day. So last year, Americans gave almost $400 billion to philanthropic causes. And while that sounds like a lot of money, consider that philanthropic giving has been pinned to roughly 2% of the gross domestic product for the past several decades, and the average American still gives just above 2% of their income to charity. So I think most of us would agree that there's some room for improvement, especially when you consider there's still so much need, hurt, and oppression, but also so many opportunities all around us to help make the world a better place. But in order to fill these gaps in society, we need more and stronger partnerships between worthy causes and people like you. Because even with the 1.2 million nonprofit organizations in the US, advances in technology with things like the internet, celebrity endorsements and concerned billionaires giving away millions at a time, that philanthropic giving has only increased by two tenths of 1% of the GDP in the last 20 years. This means that while our, the economy grows, our gifts to charity continue to be about the same proportion of our income year after year. But the problem isn't whether or not we're generous people, and it's not that we can't afford to give more. The real issue that keeps us from giving and giving more is that we haven't had the tools to, uh, to solve a problem that was identified 2,300 years ago. So let me explain. Around 340 BC, Aristotle wrote, to give away money is an easy matter and in anyone's power, but to decide whom to give it to, how much, when, for what purpose and how to give it is neither in everyone's power, nor is it an easy matter. Even with so many advances in society and technology, the Aristotle barriers from 2,300 years ago are what hold you and I back from increasing our generosity. But what if it was possible to increase giving to 3% of the GDP? In the United States alone, a 1% increase in giving would translate to almost $200 billion a year to improve societal conditions for this and future generations. And just imagine the possibilities if we could inspire giving to 3% around the world. So today, I hope to at least spark a conversation, but I'd rather start a movement that crosses all boundaries and involves all people because every person has the ability to give. Over the past few years, artificial intelligence has revolutionized our world and is considered one of the most significant advances in technology since the Industrial Revolution. And I believe that AI holds the power to inspire more giving by making the act of generosity easier than ever before. The fact is, the overwhelming number of worthy causes makes it difficult for us to decide when, where, and how much to give. 
So as a default, we often give to the most popular or low-risk charities, not because we're truly inspired, but because it's the easiest thing to do. So as we look beyond the way philanthropy is currently practiced, an opportunity exists through technology to connect more people like you with causes that will inspire and trigger an act of generosity. In context of innovation, AI has been called the new electricity and holds the power to solve each of the Aristotle barriers. From forecasting the weather to reading x-rays or watching TV, AI is already shaping the platform that almost every business sector operates, except for one, the nonprofit sector. Right now, the nonprofit sector is at an inflection point so monumental that it will define the future of generosity. This inflection point hinges on the sector's ability to quickly leverage machine learning technologies. And while both the for-profit and nonprofit sectors have access to massive amounts of data, the nonprofit sector lacks the financial resources to maximize it. One reason is a result of how nonprofit organizations are legally structured and evaluated by society, and the expectation that about 80 cents on the dollar goes to the mission and 20 cents goes to operations. And that's fine, but it leaves things like innovation a luxury that most nonprofits just can't afford. In 1955, the Rockefeller Foundation took a risk to fund a research project at Dartmouth College where John McCarthy and a team of scientists coined the term artificial intelligence. And while the foundation didn't fund the full proposal, they funded half that stated, this suggests a modest gamble for exploring a new approach. But there's a great deal of hesitancy about risking any substantial amount at this stage. More than any other hurdle, the concept of risk is something that nonprofit organizations have the hardest time convincing donors to support. Still, it's an amazing parallel that philanthropy helped kickstart AI and it's AI that holds the power to unlock generosity. Without funding to leverage AI, the nonprofit sector won't be afforded the same opportunity. But AI can help nonprofit organizations reach new heights and finally break the 2% barrier. We're all very aware that, or, uh, that for profit organizations use AI to track our digital footprint. Things like our LinkedIn profile, Instagram likes, Facebook posts, and tweets are all gathered together to better understand our buying patterns an effort to sell us a product. But what if the same concept could be used in nonprofit to in increase generosity? And this is where the concept of precision philanthropy comes in. Precision philanthropy could easily uncover my association to eradicate polio. 17 years ago, I served on a team that canvassed neighborhoods in India to help determine where polio, inocul polio inoculations were needed. But unless you're a friend or family member, you never know how meaningful this was to me because only uncorrelated bits of data exist that would seem insignificant to anyone in the public view. But if you did a little searching, you'd probably find a benign reference to this point on the bottom of my LinkedIn profile. And if you search a little more, you might find a fairly uh, an, a relationship to my father-in-law, Dr. Otto Estelle, who spent a significant portion of his life as a volunteer through Rotary International to help end polio. But it would be almost impossible for any person to correlate all of my shares, posts, and likes when Bill Gates announces that another country has been declared polio free. So you would think that with my personal experience and passion for this effort, that I'd be the ideal donor toward ending this debilitating disease. But to prove Aristotle's point, I've never been solicited, so I haven't given, because it hasn't been easy enough for me to determine when, where, and how much to give. While countless bits of data represent clues, that, uh, represent clues to things that inspire us, they're scattered all over the internet. And putting them together would be like doing a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, but the pieces hidden all over your house, in drawers, in cupboards, under stacks of magazines, in the refrigerator, in the garage. Even Sherlock Holmes would have to spend days or weeks just trying to find the pieces, but machine learning technology has the, has the ability to find the pieces and put the puzzle together in just seconds. So let's just pretend you're one of those people who watch a slow motion commercial with animals in cages and Sarah McLaughlin singing in the background. <laughs> it could happen. You might even be one of those people that occasionally watch and like one of the two million cat videos online. <laughs> With just a few data points, like making a donation or watching, sharing, or liking a cat video, an animal welfare organization powered by machine learning could dramatically increase the chances that you'll give again and at a higher level by matching your passion with purpose and customizing your solicitation efforts, your engagement, your communication to feature mittens the kitten instead of Duke the dog. But predicting generosity isn't easy. Giving's a very personal thing with hundreds if not thousands of psychological and economic variables, most of which aren't nearly as identifiable as liking a cat video. 
but guided by AI, the future of generosity can collect our clues of inspiration and create a customized roadmap to our philanthropic journey. And to paraphrase Aristotle's words, make it easier to give. And not just give, but more deeply engage the causes that are most meaningful to us. So as we partner together, nonprofit organizations, philanthropists like you, and for-profit experts can collaborate to solve some of the world's most pressing issues by matching passion to purpose through machine learning. The positive impact on humanity will be enormous as we overcome the Aristotle barriers through AI, because it's not limited choices that prevent us from taking action, Instead, it's lack of inspiration that holds us back from getting more deeply involved. And the stakes are high because this is not a race for market share. It's our responsibility to improve the human condition because new tools finally exist for you and I to do more good for humanity than any other generation before us. And since the measurement of success is based on our collective impact on humanity, the adoption of AI will only be made possible if we're willing to take a risk and invest in innovation. So as we work together to make giving easier through AI, let's you and I commit to finally breaking the 2% barrier and make the world a better place. Because generosity is not merely a transaction. It's a partnership that binds us together for the love of humankind. Thank you.